Hey Vinyl Community, Mark here again from Sound Matters covering all things vinyl and record collecting as usual and actually today we're going to cover some of the mistakes that we can make as record collectors because with the world of vinyl there is so much to learn and in particular when we were new to the hobby perhaps or if you are new to the hobby more likely to make some of these mistakes as a collector but even the most seasoned of vinyl hoarders will still make mistakes from time to time we're only human after all so without further ado let's get into some of the worst mistakes we can make as record collectors and then it's over to you after the video down in the comments below to let me know which points you would add to this list So let's start with the basics and I am going to sound sort of pun intended a little bit like a broken record here but playing dirty records is one of the worst mistakes you can make as a record collector. It kind of goes without saying but in the earlier days of record collecting perhaps you weren't aware maybe that records could be so dirty and particularly if you're buying a lot of used records dirty record is going to be a problem for you. You're going to have to do some vinyl record cleaning because otherwise you're going to reduce the longevity of your records. You are going to shorten the life of your stylus and have to replace it more often and you know starlight get pretty expensive so we don't want to be doing that too regularly but we want to have also of course let's not forget the best audible experience. We want the best fidelity from our records as well so cleaning your record collection is imperative and completely necessary if you're buying used records but even with some new records as well we need to take a look at some of those in terms of how they come from the factory we've covered that before and overall I would say is there's just a whole wealth of information over at the Sound Matters website and on this channel about record cleaning I'll put some links in the description below and perhaps even pop a video or two up in the top corner here for you to check out in your own time but I think as a record collector, probably one of the most obvious but worst things we can do is play dirty records. Next up on the list is improper record storage, which is very closely related, of course, to playing dirty records because very often dirty records naturally are a product of improper record handling and incorrect record storage so sometimes we can skimp over the details as record collectors and this can be a huge mistake now it's a topic in its own right correct record storage of course i'll put some links in the description below for the full guys that we've got on this topic but the very basics here really are that we want to store the records in a very stable environment avoiding any excessive heat or cold and we want to store them vertically in a very strong solid record cabinet of course ikea make that very affordable ubiquitous Calax unit which is superb for storing lots of vinyl records as long as you use them properly and on top of this we want to keep our records in high quality inner and outer record sleeves because those standard paper sleeves that records ship with are notoriously bad for scuffing records and leaving paper flakes all over the place they don't protect the record very well at all and they also don't guard against static so we want good quality inner sleeves poly lined inner sleeves and we want high quality outer sleeves of course to protect the artwork particularly when we're pulling that record in and out of the cabinet we can start to scuff up the artwork scuff up the edges and degrade the value and the experience we get when we use and listen to our records again down in the description below is our list of recommended record inner sleeves and outer sleeves different record cabinets you can buy and a full guide on how to store records safely and in the best possible way for longevity next up is not picking up valuable records when we see them not seizing that moment so let's say we see a holy grail record find or a rare record when we're out record shopping and for budgetary reasons perhaps or for whatever reason you just don't pick it up and then you regret it naturally further down the line and I can think of an example where well there's countless examples really but one particular example that I really regret was not picking up a copy of the original Buckingham Knicks album which looking back now it was a really good deal considering the rarity of that record but I didn't pick it up because I was just kind of scared to spend the money at the time and I would say over to you I would say perhaps it's worth just considering what you could cut 
back on. Perhaps you can cut back on some of your grocery spending. Perhaps you could not have that extra coffee. I know I'd rather have that rare record in my collection than to have that extra coffee or two during the week. There are always, I think, things we can do to help kind of mitigate the expense of records and when you think about it things like coffees are fleeting momentary things that you have whereas a record is something that you keep for your entire life which one would you rather have number four on my list is not checking used records properly and i'm guilty to this even to this Day. The amount of times that I'm just in a hurry, I don't check the condition of the record very well, and I just want to get in and out with those records. But nine times out of ten, this is just a very fast highway to disappointment. So it's well worth taking the extra time, just slow down a little bit, you know, kind of take the time to properly inspect the record, check which version of the record it is, you know, reference discogs, that kind of side of things as well, and make sure it's the correct record that's in the sleeve. I've lost count of the amount of times that I've bought records and the record that's inside is a replacement for the original record that was put in by somebody else who obviously damaged the original and then replaced it and put it in the original sleeve. That has happened to me far too many times. It's really annoying so it really is well worth just taking your time when you're shopping for used records. Number five is overpaying for used records. Now gone are the days where you could pick up bargain basement price original pressings at charity and thrift stores for you know pennies and loose change basically you know gone are those days where people the, the demand for vinyl just wasn't there but unfortunately thanks to the resurgence in interest for vinyl which is a fantastic thing a lot of these places of course have cottoned on to the real value of records and it's very difficult to find those bargains these days that said as well there are some right to use an english phrase chances out there that are just overpricing records. They've heard about the value of records, they've heard about how in demand they are, and they're overpricing their records for poor quality, for poor reissues, and just general bad condition records. So get yourself very familiar with the grading scheme, the gold mine standard grading scheme of records, and just be aware of what the records are actually worth. Check Discogs for the real market value. Take that extra time when you're out there shopping and don't overpay for junk. Next up is leaving records in the car when you've bought them. And I think this one's a classic, and this has happened to so many of us. You know, particularly when you're new to collecting records, you may be not aware of how just how fast a record can warp to pieces inside a hot car. You get a nice hot sunny day, that car quickly becomes like a greenhouse. So if you've got to do some extra stuff during the day after you've gone record shopping, of course, you need to take the records out of the car and with you, even if you're just going somewhere else for a very short period of time because it's a very quick way to wreck those records even a minor warp can reduce fidelity and of course a record can quickly become near unplayable or completely ruined if it becomes dramatically warped and there's you know there are some techniques out there that people have come up with to put vinyl records in ovens and that side of things but that of course comes with its own risk as well and we just want to avoid getting warps in the first place number seven I think we're at seven by this point, is holding on to records that you never play. Now, at the end of the day, I think records are there to be played. We are, after all, talking about music here, not trophies. But even I'm guilty of this to some degree in that I've got records perhaps that aren't really my taste, that are in my record collection, or, you know, perhaps I just haven't played in years because it's something that I used to enjoy but perhaps I don't anymore. There are several reasons as to why you might not be playing a record and it might just be sat there on your shelf taking up space that could be filled with new music, new records that you will actually love and enjoy. And perhaps there is some kind of case for some collectibles, perhaps restoring value if you're into that kind of side of things and not actually playing those records or at least not playing them very often. But I think really when all is said and done, nine times out of ten, records are meant to be played. So I say quality over quantity. Don't just fill your record collection just to have a large record collection. Have a record collection of any size filled with music that you 
love. Last one on the list before I hand it over to you guys is Careless Turntable Operation. And I think we can all name a few records in our collection that perhaps have fallen foul to poor handling of our records and just generally being hasty and careless when operating the turntable or handling the records. And if that has never happened to you, then I dip my hat to you. But I can tell you that I have made mistakes. The trick is not to make a habit of it. But actually, my worst mistake involved a candle and some holiday drinks. And needless to say, the record was completely destroyed. I won't go into details. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to read that story, but it was some stupidity on my hand in terms of just, yeah, adult beverages and having a good time. But fortunately, it wasn't too much of an expensive record, but these things happen. I wonder what mistakes perhaps you've made in your collection. You know, which records do you lament losing to careless turntable operation so that concludes today's video thank you ever so much for watching as usual of course it's now over to you which points have i missed which mistakes which critical fundamental vinyl record mistakes and sins have i missed off of this list today let us know down in the comments below I always love to hear your thoughts out there in the vinyl community but if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing thank you ever so much to everybody who's supported this channel so far it means so much to me thank you so much and we'll see you in that next video keep spinning Thank you.